here oh my god it was so sunny earlier today too and then in the span of 20 minutes it's like pouring pouring rain yes your place is so nice it thank you so hard. much for letting me sleep on my bed no it's fine no. I, i'm gonna sleep on the couch as no. long as your sister's okay with it i'm literally not sleeping yeah. here today sleep on my bed are Just you sure honey dude nobody's in my room but your place is, oh my god, the view is so nice! It's, my whole place. Wait, what is it called? No, Sats? That's the best one. S A A P S. S it doesn't open on Sundays. So okay. Today. This Sats. is like my favorite spot. Get the chicken marouche sandwich. Manouche? Mar marouche? 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 <laughs> I'll go check chicken it out. Chicken marouche sandwich. It's kind of like halal on a sandwich. Chicken marouche. It's probably my favorite sandwich in Philly. Really? Yeah. 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 So nice seeing Dana and Jonathan. Fun fact, Dana was my first Cornell friend that I made and she was the one that actually also introduced me to my ex ex-boyfriend at the time whose name was also Kevin. A lot of fun facts, a lot of fun facts here. We weren't really like super close in college just because like we hung out with really different crews. But um, over the summer she visited Korea and I hung out with her and her fiance. Jonathan and it was so much fun. It was just like really sweet of them to reach out and like support me and say like Oh, like, you're doing great. She's just like a bright ray of sunshine and she's also so smart I really like her the older I get the more I realize like I also have to do my part in being super positive and Reaching out to people part of the reason why I'm like staying and couch surfing at some of my uh, Friends places is also because like whenever I do see my friends It's always just like a quick coffee here or, or like a dinner and I never really get to hang out hang out Like I used to like in college like sometimes it's not about how much you can cram it but just like being in each other's vicinity and I really had a fun time doing that with my friend that I just stayed at in New York as well you can always stay at a hotel but couch surfing is definitely something that you can only do with close friends and it's like a big luxury so I've really been having fun just like reaching out to people that I would not otherwise usually reach out to and just being in the city and just reconnecting and reminiscing old times damn i sound old philly it's such an interesting mix of upenn and drexel it's like a college town and it has such a deep-rooted history with people who are so proud of where they live and i really like places where the locals have such a like strong sense of pride and community new york has that obviously but philly is definitely super duper strong as well i used to like not understand it when i was young Younger, but having that kind of like represent mentality is so important in also like caring more for where you live and the community the people around you in general I'm uh, almost near the Italian markets it is closing up right now just because it's kind of end of the day I'll probably come back in the morning tomorrow actually you know what I'm gonna park my car and just look around there's still a lot of places that are open and it looks really interesting. So one thing that's really popular is something called a water ice. It's basically a slushie. I like starting dessert first. Okay, it should be just around the corner. Uh, could I get a lemon water ice, please? Thank you so much. So I got a medium-sized lemon water ice, and I like don't understand how they achieve this kind of consistency, honestly. Like this honestly like defies science, and like I studied food science, right? So in order to get this, like you need to have like the perfect level of sugar to water consistency, because it's like has something to do with like the solids and the liquids. And this is kind of like an equilibrium. It's neither liquid nor solid. And it's just perfect. They really just recreated snow that's flavored and lemony and absolutely delightful. And I got a medium and this is 350. 
since 1945, they've defied science. Water and a liquid solid homeostasis. I say this to everyone that I meet, but Philly is so underappreciated. Like I also used to think that Philly was not gonna lie a shithole, but it's actually so much good food. I actually think that the food scene in Philly is better than New York. And I know that's like gonna insult a lot of people, but it's also because New York is unapproachable in terms of opening new businesses. It's so expensive, it's so over competitive, it's so difficult for uh, small businesses to open. Whereas Philly is like more approachable in the sense I've just been like thinking about one thing and one thing only and that is just cheesesteaks especially with a lot of onions caramelized so I think I'm gonna go grab a sandwich I got the goods. They close at seven, so I just made it like 10 minutes before they close. So feeling pretty lucky. As I've been walking around the Italian market, everywhere is like, you know, they started in 1892, 1900s. Like, it just has so much history. All the restaurants are like 100 years old, easy. I was saying this earlier, but I'm surprised that this place only opened in 2013 because all the Italian restaurants around this area, they all are easily 100 years old. Angelo's comes out of nowhere in 2013 after the recession, I guess, and makes the best Philly cheesesteak. Let's see if it lives up to the hype. Look at that. Wow. That is one juicy guy. Just look at that. Oh, I think one of the first things that I noticed straight off the bat is the bread and the amount of sesame that's on top of it. And the second thing I noticed is how heavy this is. It's like, it's like carrying like a baby's arm. What the fuck? What the fuck? I need time to process this. Wow. Dear people of Philly, I have misjudged you because whenever somebody would say, my favorite sandwich is a Philly cheesesteak, <laughs> I'd say mid, one syllable, that's it. And I always thought it was because the only Philly cheesesteak that I tried was Gino's. And uh, if I were to make a comparison, it's like getting Sbarro's. And I'm gonna go get me a New York slice. And I just didn't know that a Philly cheesesteak could taste like this. Because, you know, I thought it was always going to be like the fake cheese that's like really like sprayed on top. But definitely the bread is so good. And because they're a pizzeria, they bake their own bread and it's super crispy on the outside. I feel like I might get a heart attack after this so it's going to be so worth it. Mmm. I'm at Saad's Halal restaurant thinking that after eating a whole foot long Philly cheesesteak, I could still eat a little bit more. It was just one of those days where I could eat like endlessly, but I'm actually like super full from the Philly cheesesteak. But you know, every day has to end with something sweet because it's just gotta keep your glucose up during the night when you sleep. I feel like having sugar at night is probably the worst for you. There's just zero scientific backing. But I definitely could eat some baklava, crispy, sweet layers. So I think I'm gonna get just a little dessert. Who said you couldn't get dessert alone? Can I just get a statue baklava and one walnut? One with each? Yes, please. <laughs> So I got a pistachio, walnut, and a chocolate baklava. I got one of each because I couldn't choose.
Good morning, Philly. It's a pretty foggy day today in Philly, but honestly, after a couple days of extreme heat wave in New York, this is just so beautiful and blissful to me. I woke up this morning with a very deep, deep craving of breakfast tacos with just a plain old flour tortilla and I got a recommendation from a subscriber who is a local so I'm gonna go check it out oh and I'm gonna go check out the Southeast Asian market with my friends Dana and Jonathan I'm so excited to be in the food capital of the East Coast okay that's a bit gross I'm gonna go now <laughs> So pretty. So this one's the chorizo egg and cheese, and I also got the migas. Mm. This wow, egg, avocado, pico de gallo, onions, cilantro, cheese. Other than like the very classic Philly dishes that I got recommended, this was probably like the third most recommended, and it's like so residential too the area that I'm in. So I got four sauces and I got this drink. I like literally finished half of it in like five seconds. It's so good. I think it's like one of the best lemonades I've ever had also. Okay, I'm gonna try it without the sauces. I'm gonna go for the chorizo egg and cheese first. Wow. Holy shit. Holy shit. I think with chorizo and like anything that has red spice, I like to balance it out with something that's like green spice. It's like two different types of spices, you know? Because one is more like herbal and fresh and green and just adds more like acidity and brightness. <laughs> mm. Oh my god. Uh, I'm regretting not getting three. Mm. It shows a lot about a place when they make everything from scratch Like making flour tortillas from scratch That takes extra love, you know? And I really like places that go the extra mile To show like, hey, we care about like the things that we serve And great showmanship too Like, it's such a great way to attract guests This is called the migas Inside they also have um, fried tortilla chips This is so good. Inside is um, fried tortilla chips and then added into like an egg omelet mixture. And the textural element that the fried tortilla chips gives is so amazing. It's like crunchy, but it also absorbs some of the juices. It's not soggy. It's just like also really indulgent. Like it adds that kind of like extra layer of fat and all the veggies, the cilantro, the onions, the tomatoes. It just has like a really nice balance to the breakfast tortillas as well. Using the tortilla chips is also such a great way to amp up the filling and also reuse whatever you don't use from before. I thought I was not going to be full by the end of this, but this is really filling. I would say this is like a must-stop place in Philly. I'm so glad I didn't just go to Reading Terminal Market. The only thing that I'm sad about is that I didn't come with other people to try more, but that's for next time.
but you will still have to grab a number which we number be I'm currently sitting on the steps of a fitness center with like two cakes and like six biscottis and two cannolis for myself. So, talk about juxtaposition. I think I'm gonna start with the cannoli first. Look at that. Mmm. <laughs> wow. I knew that dog was super jealous of me. So I got the mascarpone cannoli. Cream here is so light and fluffy. Either sides are dipped in dark chocolate, but usually when I get mascarpone cannolis, it's a little bit too much and too thick. Like I don't like it when it's like gummy, you know? And a lot of the times it's gummy because like it needs to be solid enough to really like push through and be piped in. If it's too airy, the middle part won't be completely filled, but this is so airy. It almost tastes like just whipped cream. I don't know how many times I need to say this, but Philly, like, it's, sorry, I, I can't speak right now. Food scene here in Philly is insane. And like, casually also like, oh yeah, yeah, it's three generations. Do you know how hard it is for a restaurant to survive even like two years? Not even a year. And the other two that I got, this one's a key lime pie tart, and this is a strawberry cheesecake. I think this is one of their most like popular, along with the biscotti. Mmm, very different from all the cheesecake I've ever tried. I think I'm crashing from the sugar. Anyways, you know Rocky, Rocky Balboa? Remember the scene where he like jumps over the stairs and then like rings the bell and it's just like well, I'm here and there's a really beautiful park behind it. I think I'm just gonna lay on the ground somewhere or walk around, we'll see. Too much ricotta, too much tacos, too much cake. Anyways, let's go. Wow, look at that. Oh, there's too much wealth in this country. I'm gonna walk around. Plus it's too wet for me to sleep on the grass. I wanna live in Philly. I'm gonna explain to you why. One, it's a fraction of the cost of New York. Two, there's beautiful architecture with so much history. For three, great food, cheap eats. Four, when I need to go to New York, I can just go. And I'm not the type of person to need to see friends every day anyways. I like to see them maybe like once a month. But that's like enough. Everywhere is so big. Mucho grande. TV and we just all kind of want to do it like that's literally how trends brands everything works really like we're like a bunch of gophers you know like when we see one person doing something we all want to emulate it like whether that be running up the stairs and putting our arms up I don't know I think this concept used to really make me angry when I was younger just being like oh like people are sheep they just want to do the same thing as everyone else. Like, I'm going to be different. But that's also, like, what's so cute about humans. Like, it makes no sense. But at the same time, like, people are so happy doing it. And uh, I think 
think I'm finally at a mental state where I'm not like so angry at people and I think it's really cute and idiosyncratic and I like these oddities about humans myself included you know I watch Rocky and I want to run up the stairs and put my arms up younger me definitely would have been way too shy to admit it but now why not you know what maybe I will Oh, maybe do we do harvest closer? Wait, what should I, what should I get? Is it better to be How hungry sun, are you? I'm not like too hungry. Can we share something? One bumble and mm. one bumble. Yeah, one. And then yeah I'm done. When I was in college, yeah. I went to Cafe Nam, but it wasn't in this location. Uh -huh. It was literally like, you'll see like three doors out. It was okay. Like, almost the like beer. in the garage. You see the old lady, she's like coming around. But it was her, her son. I had low expectations because I was like, yo, it doesn't look that nice. Uh -huh. but, the spots hit the best. Yeah. And ever since, I've been, I tried taking her, like all my friends, I always be like, this is the spot, but she don't like it. I love it. Wow. wow. But it's like very like kind of poppy. Mm-hmm. Like. Then we have the bomb. Wow. Do you like sour? I put like ten limes in this. Usually. Yeah. <laughs> Are you down to hang with us all day? No. Okay. What do we do? You're, you're not. No, I'm not. Does he have that car? No, right? Um, it's over there. It's Morgus Borg place oh, yeah, you went yeah. to. It's just not, damn, that, that's like, that's like a bad one. It's a sour one. I love canned fish. so many. Do you know May? She's like a canned fish. In Is she the? I don't know. She's an Asian girl, like with the short hair. I'm obsessed with her. You should watch her videos. It's so I watched some like. I also need some coffee. I'm so full. Maybe like red eye. Is that their cold brew? What was your posture on the internet, Dana? My what? Your posture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say hi. Oh, like yeah, wedding pictures? Yeah. This is pretty much old city, so this is like the OG Philly. You see a lot of like cobblestone streets. So that, that's like where America was pretty much declaring its own independence. Pretty big deal, you know? We wouldn't be here. No way. Um, <laughs> Liberty Bell, the fake Liberty Bell is in that building. I don't know where the real one is actually. <laughs> they always say it's fake, but then like everyone takes a picture with it. I don't know why. So they cracked it deliberately to make it look like the real one. Yeah, I mean. There is. Yeah, but I, th I don't think you can like change midway. <laughs> Wait, we literally can't I, see I, it. Should I break? Should I Jonathan, can you use it? Your, your long arm? That? No. Like... I don't know. Oh, yeah, that thing. That Gen Z shit. <laughs> yes. I can't, my arms are too short. How do I do this okay, just, just, okay. just No, you do it. Ew! Can I get? Can, can you do it? Can you just do it? I'm so bad at the point five. Okay. That's it's better. <laughs> better than nothing, right? Can you send that? Yeah, 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 yeah. The thing with Philly is that so many of these architecture are so grandiose and big and beautiful, and they're just like, yeah, I guess. And I find that so funny. I feel like I have that same mentality towards like. Korea as well, like it's just like everyday life, so I get very jaded by it, and it's the same for every like local in their city.
today we're not going into the Korean restaurant, but the Middle Eastern one next door. I really don't know. Like, are, you, are you okay with being. Yeah? I don't care. Yeah? He's happy. Look at his smile. <laughs> You're an, that was actually bro. perfect though. The bro. Like, I, like, I'm like choking. <laughs> Such a drama queen. Every time Ness is like, <laughs> everyone's <laughs> super quiet. Cheers. 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 So sweet. Oh, it tastes exactly like Chicho Guam. Do you eat a pita, I'm guessing? Yes. yes. But it kind of tastes like chicken. Nothing but you know the beans too. that are used in this? Like, oh my God, I don't like it. Wow. She's a pro. Whoa, it's a cheese with like sweet. Today, <clears throat> oh my god, my voice. Today's the last day in Philly. I'm gonna grab coffee with Dana and then head over to DC. I wanna say I'm so sad to leave Philly. I like it so much here. I think I'm definitely gonna come back soon and with Kevin, hopefully. So, another foggy morning. Show me your, show me your scrubs. Wow. Wow, look at her. Look at her. I feel out of place. <laughs> So I'm going to Rockville, Maryland, and it's around like a two and a half hour drive. And I know that midway through, I'm gonna be so delirious and like hungry. So I'm gonna buy something from Reading Terminal Market. It's like a central marketplace with so much food. There's also a lot of fresh produce. Before I leave, I really wanted to get the roast pork sandwich. I had it last year when I visited Penn, but I want one again and I want to compare it to a Philly cheesesteak as well. I feel like that would be like, oh. Hi. Hi. I'm good. How are you? Can I get a roast pork sandwich with everything on top? Thank you so much. Have a great day. Look at that cross section. So beautiful. Oh my god, it looks so good. Thinly shaved pork, broccoli rabe, and I got some hot peppers. What really stands out about this roast pork sandwich is how moist it is. Like people think that, oh, everything always has to be super crispy and crunchy. But what this place understands is that soft and moist is a really, really important food factor, especially when you have sandwiches. So what they do is they get this like big pork shoulder, roast it and braise it, cut it thin probably when it's cooled down and then they keep it in the brine and by doing that you get this like really moist like shaved roast pork pieces and it makes it like really really succulent that's the word I'm looking for succulent and the broccoli rabe if you're not familiar with what it is it's like daddy long leg broccolis it's like really tall thin 
and it kind of has notes of almost like mustard it adds a little bit of kick and a bit of you know that wasabi taste and adds like another dimension the hot peppers are spicy and nice and most importantly the bread that holds all of it together this is called a french loaf it's really airy and soft and chewy and pillowy kind of different from angelo's like angelo's had like really hard bread it's more like baguette like and it's really crunchy it's like the type of sandwich that really hurts the top of your mouth my mouth still hurts from it this is just really like warm and soft and welcoming and it's just like it's sleeping in a bed with high thread counts that's what it feels like mm. and the provolone inside is really nice too comparing this to a philly cheesesteak personally i like a roast pork sandwich more i think it's because of all the different components for me. Like for me, sandwich is all about layers and Philly cheesesteak is great. Like the first bite of a Philly cheesesteak will always be better than a roast pork sandwich. But would I be able to eat a whole foot long of a Philly cheesesteak without feeling really gross? Not really. Like it, I think it's too much. But like this, it has spicy, it has like that mustardy taste, it's moist, it's juicy. I like the textural components as well. Like some are thin, some are crunchy. It's just more happening. And I'm somebody who like likes a lot of things happening. It's literally the reason why I own a restaurant. So I think I prefer this. I mean, both are really good. It's like saying like, do you like mom or dad more? But I always liked my mom better when I was growing up. Now I like my dad more. But we always have favorites, you know? Just like how parents probably have their favorite kids. That's why being an only child is the best. You can be the least favorite and the most favorite. Mm. I literally ate too good while I was in Philly. It was just so easy to. Wealth of food, great people, different cultures, everything about Philly. This was so, so much fun and I had a blast just going around the city by myself and eating my way through. I feel like a lot of people have these preconceived notions about Philly that it's like really run down and it's like a lesser version of DC and New York and Boston. But honestly, it's number one in my heart. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed everything and hopefully you get a chance to visit Philly and enjoy all these foods. I feel like I've only scratched a fraction of the surface, but um, until next time. Bye! I'm driving to Maryland now. Do, do, do.